Time for member statement. Thank you to the member from Durham. The member from Newmarket, Aurora. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in the House today in support of the Canadian Cancer Society's Daffodil Campaign. Every April, the Canadian Cancer Society's Daffodil Campaign raises essential funds to save lives and improve the quality of life for people affected with, by cancer, spreading hope from community to community. A key part of this effort is supporting the world-leading work of cancer researchers in Canada to transform cancer care and improve the treatment experience. I'm thankful for the Canadian Cancer Society for all the work they do across this province, but also in my riding. I am confident that everyone in this chamber had or currently has a loved one who was diagnosed with cancer. I have a sibling who was diagnosed a year ago and is today fighting for her life. As the member of the Provincial Parliament for Newmarket Aurora, I'm committed to continuing to work closely with the Canadian Cancer Society as they establish health policies to prevent cancer and better support those living with this disease here in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. The member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today on behalf of London West families of children with autism. After four and a half years on the wait list, Sarah Ferrance felt hopeful when her seven-year-old son Mason was invited to register for the OAP in October, but she has heard absolutely nothing since. While she waits, the one-time funding that paid for Mason's speech therapy has run out, and so has Sarah's hope for Mason's future. After a 10-month wait for an assessment for his three-year-old son, Luke, Sean Menard was told he could wait years for OAP funding. Sean wants a plan from this government to clear the backlog and get Luke the critical early intervention he needs. Sean desperately wants Luke to speak one day, but says without help from the government, Luke may never speak a single word to his mother or me. Even for families who have been approved, the autism program is broken. Virginia Ridley's two teenage sons received OAP funding, but Virginia struggles to find services geared to youth and faces constant delays getting reimbursed. At the end of February, she was out of pocket $9,000. Speaker, with no mention of autism in the 2023 budget, these families feel abandoned by the Ford government. Where is the plan? Where is the urgency to fix the OAP and get Mason and Luke and Virginia's sons the services they need and deserve? Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this year marks the 47th anniversary of the annual Festival of the Maples in Perth, Ontario. Since 1976, Perth has celebrated a legacy of liquid gold against a backdrop of magnificent heritage architecture on the banks of the Tay River. Hosted by the Perth Chamber of Commerce, the Festival of the Maples embraces all that Lanark County has to offer, with artisans, vendors, musicians, and award-winning maple syrup producers. For residents, guests, and tourists of every age, the day begins with steaming stacks of pancakes and unwinds with music, shopping, dining, and classic entertainment, including the historic sap tapping contest and the wood cookie cross-cut saw competition. Speaker, Lanark County is the maple syrup capital of Ontario, and this time of year, visitors are hiking our sugarbush trails, touring award-winning multi-generational sugar camps, and heading home with some of the finest maple syrup in the world. Throughout Lanark County, you'll find maple syrup featured in restaurants, bakeries, coffee shops, and distilleries, all eager to embrace the sweet taste of spring. Last year's fe festival featured 160 vendors and welcomed over 30,000 guests. This is a town of 9,000. 30,000 guests to this event. Today, Mr. Speaker, I extend a warm Lanark County welcome to one and all to experience the 47th Festival of the Maples Saturday, April 29th, in beautiful Heritage, Perth. Hope to see you there. Under statement, the member from Thunder Bay, Superior North. Merci, Madame la Présidente. 
Abe. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Unfortunately, uh, the Ford government is not helping Franco-Ontarians. Uh, the provincial budget of this year is actually a clear example of uh, uh, this uh, um, policy. They don't have any program and any help for Francophone speakers. It is incredible. Our government uh, is actually uh, not having a real vision for Franco-Ontarians. We do need a government uh, which is going to uh, show solidarity to Franco-Ontarians, which offer health care in French, which offer helps for mental health and helps people to have access to health services and to uh, affordable housing. And one more thing, very often the highways 11 and 17 are closed because of accident. First of all, we need to have inspections on these roads, and also we need to uh, control and to check the driver's life license of uh, drivers of truck drivers, because very often these drivers are not ready to drive on these roads because of the weather conditions and because of the road conditions. Franco Ontarians deserve more than that. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to congratulate the new Minister for Children and Community Services. This minister is... Thank you. Minister. Minister is a very compassionate and hardworking. Minister is someone who talks from the heart. I'm very excited to working with him as a parliamentary assistant. I also want to thank and congratulate the new associate minister for housing for her new role. Madam Speaker, the 2023 budget is resonate in my riding of Mark and Thornhill, very well received. My constituents at the Armadale Seniors Club Tamil Seniors Association, Boscrow Seniors Wellness Club, and Greenboro and Middlefield Seniors Wellness Club in Markham are all very happy with the budget and commending the changes to expand the eligibility for Keynes program, what he calls a guaranteed annual income system for the seniors. We have a minister for seniors is right beside me. Thank you, minister. Keynes program for seniors, another important news. And also my constituents like Ms. Cho appreciate the increases in the ODSP benefit by our government. Also, parents and students are both very happy to know that through the targeted math support, an additional 12.6 million investment is provided. I will, it will double the number of math coaches who will be responsible for implementing early intervention strategy for better understanding math concepts. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes. The member from Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. Today I want to talk about my friend Marcel Charon. Mars was a mill operator at Glencore back when it was called Falconbridge. He worked on the floor at a blue collar job. He was the sort of guy who was friendly and quiet. He's definitely funny. He was proud to be blue collar, but he wasn't a stereotype speaker. Marcel spoke openly about the horrors of femicide and the damage it does to the community. His sister Chantal was murdered by an ex boyfriend, and Mars shared his pain, hopeful that it would help, hopeful it would lead to change. Most people knew Marcel as someone who believed in workers. He spoke for workers. He stood for workers. He simply wanted a better world for everyone. His activism got him more involved with his union. And in 2013, he was elected as vice president at Mine Mill Unifor Local 598, my dad's union. Five years later, he was their president. Unfortunately, early in his term, Mars was diagnosed with cancer. And the fight with cancer was hard over the past five years. But I witnessed a love story, and I'm a sucker for a love story. And fewer is beautiful how much Kathy loved Marcel and how much he loved her right back, Speaker. It's easy to be in love in the best of times, and it's beautiful to see love fight through in the worst. Last Friday, I visited Kathy and Marcel at the Maison McCulloch Hospice. Cass said he knew he had to come, but he was mad, and Marcel winked at her and he said, I'll get over it. This is the last time I ever see Marcel, Speaker. A blue-collar worker, a vocal advocate against femicide, a worker activist, a union president, a loving father, a loving husband. I'll miss you, brother. Member from Haspel, Kitchener, South Haspeler. Thank you, Speaker. 
this is a, a, a brief statement about, uh, about, about death and about uh, gratitude. When I was 19, so about 17 years ago, I was driving to work, I was late, and I changed lanes to uh, avoid a bus, and I rear-ended an old lady. Um, and as I said, that was 17 years ago, and most rear endings uh, don't follow the story that we did, but what ended up happening was we sort of adopted her into our family as a bit of a grandmother figure for me. Her name was Elta, and she was from the island country of, of Dominica, and over the years, my mother took care of her, uh, and that care escalated. Uh, Elta passed away recently. And in the course of her passing, I had the opportunity to experience both the palliative care uh, team uh, in our, our area, particularly Dr. Celine Sandor, and then ultimately the incredible benefit that we have in Waterloo Region of Hospice Waterloo Region. Um, a week before her passing, Elta was moved to Lazard House Hospice. And we were very worried that it would be incredibly stressful for her. But her first day there, uh, I came into the room and she held my mother's hand and she just said, I'm so happy. And I want to tell them how thankful I am for them taking care of Elta in her years and how grateful I am that we have them in our riding. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Haldman, Norfolk. Thank you, Speaker. On Tuesday, I was invited to a Moms and Tots tea party in the hamlet of Fairground, Norfolk County. This tea party, hosted by the Norfolk Community Health Centre, is part of a much larger picture, a bigger community initiative. Speaker, the Help Centre supports women in the community, largely from the Mennonite population, but also women from the Indigenous community and, as of late, the Ukraine. The goal is to often work toward obtaining a grade 12 education while learning English as a second language. Since the program began, 64 low German-speaking women have graduated with their Ontario Secondary School Diploma. The centre also has a partnership with Fanshawe College and the Grand Erie District School Board. Currently, 15 people of diverse backgrounds are learning QuickBooks accounting. A Moms and Tots program allows these women to come together to improve social, emotional and general well-being. Many of the families served have between five and nine children. These vital community connections enhance independence and coping skills while raising awareness of nutrition, reproductive practices and physical activity. Other supports offered are in areas such as settlement, advocacy, pre- and postnatal care, as well as low German interpretation. The supports being offered in the community continue to grow, all on a shoestring budget, all with the love of a few key people and under the leadership of Executive Director Nancy Hildebrand. Speaker, this is a small but very interesting area with many issues and needs. I look forward to working with Nancy and her team for more opportunities to assist and empower this community. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, culture gives us a sense of belonging and help us connect to serve and celebrate while bonding for life. That is why cultural organizations like Rajasthan Association of North America do remarkable service to the world we live in. Started in 2007, Rana Canada has grown into a vibrant association of entrepreneurs, healthcare providers, lawyers, educators, financial and IT professionals. From the last 15 years, Rana has been promoting cultural values through community events like Holi, Gangor, Canada Day, India Day, and Diwali. Mr. Speaker, tough times are the test times. During COVID-19, Rana members distributed meals to the homeless, supported hospitals, local food banks with the financial contribution. Rana also provided scholarships to deserving youth and supported students with extreme financial hardship, provided platform to mentor local and international students to help them to better integrate, succeed and contribute to Canada. I am pleased to share that our Mississauga Malton Community Office is joining hands with Rana to organize a blood donation drive in the effort to keep working for the good of the entire community. Thanks to Rana members for going above and beyond the call of duty and becoming integral part of beautiful mosaic of Canada. You are true representative of Ontario spirit. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, this coming Sunday, April the 2nd, is World Autism Day. 
Many of us are aware of autism, and we recognize that autism brings with it its unique challenges and obstacles, but also strengths, skills, and perspectives that enrich our communities and contribute to our collective growth. Now, we must turn our attention away from awareness and towards acceptance and inclusivity. I ask that all of us here in the chamber and all in our audience embrace the diverse spectrum of human experiences by creating environments where individuals with autism feel valued, heard, and supported. Let us take it upon ourselves to learn about autism, to challenge misconceptions and break down barriers. By cultivating a culture of acceptance, we nurture the growth of individuals on the spectrum and allow them to thrive in their own unique way. Speaker, on World Autism Day, let us commit to a world where awareness leads to inclusion, where understanding leads to acceptance, and where every individual, regardless of their neurological makeup, has the opportunity to contribute their talents and reach their full potential. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.